You know how it is with football matters. It never really ends. You know, you can even watch the replays time and time again and just love it, depending on who you support. Well, this morning we had two gentlemen joining us to discuss the just concluded FIFA World Cup. Uh, Ida Peterside, former Super Eagles goalkeeper, as well as uh, Shwabu Gara Gombe, former chairman of Gombe State Football Association. He's also former. He's the chief executive, actually, of Green White Green Sports Center. And he's also the former chairman of Gombe United Football Club. So they both know football. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for joining us on the program here today. Uh, Mr. Peter, uh, let me start with you. What a match it was yesterday, and um, I'm sure you are glued like several other football lovers. Did the team you supported win in the first place? Yeah, it's obvious. The way the whole world supported Messi. It's not about um, supporting <laughs> a team. I'm not Argentine. I'm not French. I'm a football person. We all want Messi to win. And um, thank goodness, thank goodness, Messi won. You know, people are saying Argentina won the World Cup. Nobody believes that. We all say Messi won the World Cup. And that's what the world wanted to see. What does this do? Does it put an end to that debate between uh, Messi and Ronaldo? Because it's won this World Cup now. A friend called me yesterday and said, uh, during the penalty case, that they should make sure that somebody is sitting very close to Ronaldo in case Ronaldo collapses. Because the, 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 the rivalry is unbelievable. You know, they did not create it, the fans did. But it has been good for football in the last 10 years. Again, congratulations to Ronaldo. I say Ronaldo, Ronaldo has, he's a goat on his own, you know, one of the greatest in the world. Yeah, but Messi yesterday was outstanding. Messi deserves the honor. Messi has won seven Ballon d'Ors. Messi won the Cup America last year. Messi has won the World Cup this year. For me, Messi is the greatest. Mm. I, I think we lost Mr. Gombe. So we'll try and get him back such that we could get his perspective. Because, I mean, uh, being uh, involved with the football club, running a football club, I'm sure you'll be watching that match with a different kind of mindset. But, Mr. Peter, in terms of officiating probably before you move on to tactics for both teams yeah. how did they stand the test for you well there's been a lot of debate the, the, the debate is who officiates the game is it the VR that officiate matches these days or is it the central referee it's been a combination of both I'm not sure it's been a bad World Cup you know because the VR has helped us to uh, cautioned some few things when the Messi goal came in. When we saw the second, the third goal of Messi, a lot of people felt it was offside until we saw the VR and the VR cleared that aspect. So, yes and no. It's been um, a give or take issue with the referee in this World Cup. But if I would rate the referee, it's been about 80%. Mm. All right, Mr. Gombe, we have him back now. W watching that match as someone who has run a football club, you've been, you've led an FA, you might have been watching it from a different perspective because there were several other people who were watching back here who couldn't but just imagine, wow, Super Eagles should have been at this World Cup. How did the whole scenario play out for you, Mr. Gombe? I'm not sure you... Did you hear me, Mr. Gombe? Okay, it looks as if it's not coming through as of yet, but, but we'll, we'll keep checking to ensure that uh, we'll sort that line of communication out. So, Mr. Peterson, about, about this officiating, uh, I know that, uh, look, they've lifted yeah. the, the trophy already, so comments that were made previously about Argentina, probably by the Portuguese team, 
saying, look, how could you get a certain person to officiate our match, knowing that Argentina was sending the World Cup, you might as well give the World Cup to Argentina. Did they count for anything at all, or it was just bad losers? Yes. Well, this, this, it's, well this, for me, it's, it's bad losing. Because uh, the world is watching the World Cup. The World Cup is not a community event. It is not a political party event. It is the World Cup. There will be mistakes. And you remember that you have a group of referees, about 57 or 58 of them, that have gone through to screening, they've gone through the process, they've proved themselves all around the continent. They were not just taken from Europe or South America. So these referees are allotted games even before the World Cup. There's a pressure for the World Cup that these things have been sorted in before the World Cup. And then there are previews. You have assessors. These assessors assess every game, every referee assessors, match assessors, match commissioners. They assess all these games. It's not um, Gombe United versus Zamfara, if I will allow my, my brother and my friend. <laughs> this is an international okay, well. setting <laughs> where things are done properly. Let, let, let's where bring him in. I hope that's not a, an indirect <laughs> jab at him because Gobe United <laughs> is a fantastic football team. <laughs> Mr. Gobe, can you hear us now? Okay, let me go to Aya. Aya's got questions. Uh, he's itching. He watched it in a different mindset. Nigeria was not play, so he, he wasn't nervous as he would have been if Nigeria was, watch, if Nigeria was playing. <laughs> Go ahead, Ayo. Trust me, I was nervous <laughs> at some point <laughs> because I mean, I just couldn't take the tension of the of the of the uh, of the penalty shootout at the end of the game. But Mr. Peter Said, uh, this is peculiar. The the match, the France Hello? Argentina match. Okay, uh, Mr. Gombe, is that? Can you hear us now? Yes, I, 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 I can hear you, but uh, you are still faint. You, you sound too far away. Oh, well, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Let me, let me just quickly ask you, for you, what's your takeaway from that match, uh, the Argentina-France match that we, we saw? Uh, perhaps lessons being uh, uh, someone who has run a football team and who runs a sports... Uh, uh, what are the takeaways, major takeaways for you in that match? What are lessons to learn? Is that Gombe or me? No, that's, that's for Mr. Gombe. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure we'll get back to him. Well, Mr. Pizza um, the, the question that I was going to ask you, I mean, the, this match was unique in, in a number of ways. From full time, yeah. went into extra time, went into a penalty shootout and, and all of that. Well, it's not the first time we're seeing that, but... For this World Cup, perhaps you would say it is peculiar. Uh, what are some of those things that you think are unique to this match in particular, beside the uh, unwritten Messi-Mbappe uh, competition, so to speak? What for you are major takeaways? I ask that against the background of the need for us to uh, bring some of, those, <coughs> excuse me, some of those lessons home to us here in Nigeria. Well, let's leave the home factor now. We are very far away from um, what happened yesterday. Yesterday was football at its best. We had the finalists. Most times, World Cup finals are not spectacular. World Cup finals are all about the trophy. Take the trophy, play badly, take the trophy, go home. Yesterday was different. I watched every World Cup finals since 1978. I tell you the truth. Yesterday was football in display. It was great presenting of Musan Bappe's um, hat trick. It has never happened in the history of football that somebody will score a hat trick and still lose the World Cup. Now, why is that an issue? The issue there is you scored a hat trick against Messi and you scored a hat trick against Argentina a side that is able to score three goals like you just scored. Yesterday was technical, tactical, 
football at its best. We didn't just see a lousy finals. We saw a finals full of goals. We saw six goals in a World Cup finals. It doesn't happen. Mm. The last time this happened was in, um, I think, in 1950-something. We, we had we said this was technical. The goalkeeper, my goodness, I was a goalkeeper. Messi led a team yesterday. Kudos to France. They brought um, um, in great performance. You can't take anything from the French side. You cannot be two down 79 and you come back 2-2. Two, two. No, who, no, who does that? It was, it was great for football. And then um, was just beautiful sitting down and screaming, you know, with friends and screaming and just enjoying football for what it is. Even though you, I play, but it's something that's watching football at this level. Mm. What I think we should learn, for me, we must have players, I've always said this, we must have players that are so committed to the flag, not to the football, to the flag. We saw players that were determined to die for their nation. We must come back to the love of country. Love of country comes first before football. Mm. Look at the reactions of these players. Look at the reaction of the nations. The, the, the desire, the desire for a nation to do well. We must bring that back to our football and bring that passion. Look at the, look at the pictures you're showing. This is unbelievable. Mm. Absolutely unbelievable. I well, was in Qatar. Well, go ahead and land I on that. Land on that statement. I, yes, I was in Qatar. You, you could see it's just something that cannot be screamed at. Mm. We must come back to the place of nation building, loving our country, and deciding to show a lot more commit, commitment to the nation. Speak to the organization, speak to the hosting, uh, Mr. Peter Side, of this particular tournament. Uh, a good number of things have been said, and the spectacle of the closing ceremony, I don't know where it came from. I mean, I've done TV for just a bit, but the, the graphics on the screen, on the stage, right there on the field, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I haven't watched so many, much of football. But I don't know how that. Speak to the entire organization and and the rest of the, irrespective of the build up to 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 the tournament. Mm. It's 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 classic. I was there. Like I said, I watched three games of the World Cup. It is mind boggling. The world technology has come in. Technology wasn't there for what we have four years or eight years ago. It's quite different. For what is there, you saw the stage. The stage came on, and they were able to send information to the stage, where they could print names. I think via Bluetooth. It's just, it's just mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. And what the Qataris did, you know, like I said, they allowed us to be us. They allowed every visitor to be themselves. They wanted to be themselves. They said, give us our space, but be yourself. So we had a great welcome. And what I think FIFA will do from now, two things happen. The place of alcohol not being sold was the best, best investment in the business. Was the best decision. You know, you can hear a story of hooliganism. We didn't hear a story of supporters fighting one another. You know, there's no difference between drunkenness and madness. Only that one lasts longer. Secondly, what we think we should be doing is should be like the Olympics. The World Cup should be like the Olympics. What do I mean? You need to look for a city, one city, that can host the World Cup. So if we say Nigeria wants to hold the World Cup, it should be in Abuja, just Abuja. Why? The players did not travel. When we were in South Africa, when we were in Russia, we kept flying for one zone, to another zone, the risk of changing hotels. The players did not change hotels. They stayed in one hotel. They did not change venues. They stayed in one city. That's why this World Cup was different.
We can take your comments now. I sincerely hope that we'll be able to take it. What for you are critical lessons to learn? One of the questions Chamberlain asked at the beginning of this program is, when <coughs> will we get to this level as a nation in our football? What are those things, Mr. Gombe, that you think we need to employ from some of the, some of the lessons from Qatar 2022? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, sadly, I'm just uh, getting back to, to, to join you, but uh, to make the basis of the time that we have. Uh, first and foremost, um, there are so many lessons to learn. And, and I just listened to Peter Seidert enumerated some of these lessons that we are going to learn. But let us uh, look at some lessons, those lessons to reduce them to our own perspective in Africa, and particularly uh, this in, in Nigeria. You can see that um, from the point of events management, it was world class. Technology was world class. Crowd management, world class. Almost every other team, hospitality, uh, visitors management, world class, and all that. But again, the, the, the perspective I'm trying to look at is that the, the, the participation of the uh, recent African teams, particularly the... the, 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 the <clears throat> What Morocco, the achievement of Morocco into this, uh, uh, this tournament. World Cup to be in the World Cup, it is not a one year or a two year uh, program. You need four years, five years to prepare for uh, this World Cup. And that is what Morocco uh, did. The performance of Morocco is a product of a good investment, it's a product of good developmental uh, program, it's a product of a good domestic league. It's a product, a product of a national uh, uh, interest and also it's a product of national priority. They have put all these things and put them right. Take for instance, I remember two of the Moroccan teams that came to Nigeria recently to play in Port Harcourt and also to play in, uh, in um, uh, Lagos in Atronican Stadium. That's quite United uh, Rivers United. For goodness sake, Two days before their arrival, they sent the list, the list of the menu, the menu list of the food the players are going to consume. This is just a local club. Two days, oh, sorry, um, three days before their arrival, they sent an advanced team with a doctor, with a security uh, uh, official, and also a technical official to come and check the hotel they are going to stay, the food they are going to eat, Person who's going to cook their who's going to cook their food, and also to see they are, where they are going to train, and even the stadium they are going to uh, disintegrate. This is just a good, and these are domestic. This is what they do with their domestic league and their clubs, and this translates into the national team, and you can see the outcome. Now, in terms of players, how many players do we use during the qualifiers? You will find a coach that is managing our team, will use 75 players in three, with three matches. What does that mean? There is no consistency. Interest. Everybody has become a match agent. You want to introduce a social and so player, you want to introduce another player. The coach will be confused. And of course, when you see some of these coaches are saying, okay, we are independent-minded. There is nothing like independent-minded as far as concerned because those coaches are not appointed <laughs> to a long-term uh, yes. uh, achievement. They are appointed for short-term achievement. We need to be appointing our coaches n for development, not for tournament. Because when you appoint your coach, you said, okay, qualify mm -hmm. us for this. Reach this. You will never focus. I had always been saying, when we take the template of the West Hope era and look at over a period of time that he has been here, he has been to Calabar, he has been to Joss, he has been to Mina, he has been to Metuguri, and even Boko to watch our players and bring them out. He blend, he blend them with the few international, the few of them who are playing in diaspora or who are playing in, the, uh, in, 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 in other countries in Europe and, um, and part of other parts of the world. And blend them and right. you saw the success. We end up having... So just before we go, gentlemen, uh, in 30 seconds, if both of you can, uh, Mr. Gombe, starting with you, do you think that Morocco okay. setting the standards for Africa now. How soon do you think Africa can match up that standard or surpass what Morocco has done?
next World Cup or not? Morocco, they have gone far. They have gone far, too far, honestly. They have raised the bar. Unfortunately, we are, if we don't learn any lesson from what they do, it is good for us to bury our pride, to partner with them and ask for their templates and see what have they done. What they, what, all the, what they have achieved is not a product of, uh, is not a product of corruption. It's not a product of inefficiency. Okay. It's not a product of sentiment. It is a product of proper, pl careful planning, conscious program, and developmental program. Now, all, all right, Mr. Patisa, in Morocco. So, so, sorry, Mr. Gobe, we, we need to go. So let's just get a, a short one from Mr. Patisa as well. Mr. Patisa, do you see any other African team matching Morocco's standard at the World Cup soon or maybe much later? Yes, it is possible. Um, it's a combination of two things. One, you need the, the talent, and one, you need the management. Most times we have the talent, but we don't have the management or the willpower for people to take decisions. Okay. We need to have people with guts to take some decisions in club sides and make our club sides professional enough based on the talent then the people running our game must think outside the box. We must think outside the box. All and right. Think, well, yeah, I think the future. We need to go, gentlemen. It, it's, it's something that uh, we'll have a lot more conversation about some of these things, such that uh, because if Morocco has done it, it means it is possible in Africa. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Shrabu Garagombe and Ida Pitasai for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.